issue of convertible loan notes. Remember, we are not saying purchases of convertible loan notes. We are not saying acquisition of convertible loan notes. We are saying issue of convertible loan notes. Like we established in the introduction, when an entity issues a convertible loan note, the standard requires that it should be treated as a compound financial instrument. Why? Because there is a convert conversion option available. Now, would the bondholders convert? They may not. The bondholders may not convert. So whether the bondholders convert or they don't convert, the rule is going to be applied. So when it comes to the compound financial instrument, we're going to be splitting the convertible loan notes we had into debt components or the debt element and the equity element. Debt element and the equity element. We're going to do the split between the two in that case. But how do we do that? So anytime the entity issues a convertible loan notes, then what is going to be happening is that we have to ask ourselves, what is the initial recognition? So on the initial recognition, the proceeds of fair value from the issue shall be divided into the debt and equity components. Into the debt and equity components. That's the first thing we do. Then, if there is any transaction cost, it will be prorated or shared between the debt and equity components in that case. So any transaction cost incurred shall be allocated between the debt and equity. Shall be allocated between the debt and equity. Please don't get any ideas. We did not say deduct the transaction cost from the proceeds, then come and share the net balance. That is not what we are saying. We are saying that the proceeds you had, you have to share it between, you have to uh, allocate it or divide it into the debt and then divide, a root dividend. Divide into debt and equity. Then any transaction cost incurred will then be shared between the debt and the equity. But the question we ask ourselves is, how do we get the debt component? Debt element shall be the present value of the cash flows of the loan notes of the convertible loan notes discounted at the interest rate without conversion rights or what we call the effective rate. Please stay with me carefully. In convertible loan notes also, what happens is that because of the conversion option, the coupon rate will be less than how much we would have paid if there was no conversion option. Let me take that again. Let me take that again. With convertible loan notes, because of the conversion option into shares, the interest rate payable on such bonds will be less than how much we are paying at the end of the day. So for instance, if we are supposed to have paid 10% on the bond, because it's a convertible loan note, we may pay 7%. So then the interest rate on the bond without a conversion rights will always be the higher figure. And that becomes the interest rate on bonds without conversion rights. So 
So let me pull it this way. Interest rates of bonds without conversion, right? Please give me a moment. Let me restructure this statement. I want to put something there. Interest rate of bonds without conversion rights. It's very important I clarify that. Interest rate of bonds without conversion rights. That rate is the same as the effective rate. Once we get that, step four, all in the initial recognition. Step four, the equity component will be the proceeds minus the debt component we calculated. So that is how we split the amount between debt and equity. This is what we mean by the first statement that we made here, that the proceeds shall be divided, shall be divided, why am I missing divided? Shall be divided into debt and equity. How do we do that? The cash flows from the debt discounted to present value using interest rate of bond without conversion rights. And that will be referred to also as the effective rate. Then the equity components, how do you get that? It is going to be your proceeds minus the debt element. Your proceeds minus the debt element. That is how we deal with the initial recognition of convertible loan notes. On the subsequent measurements, it's going to be pretty simple here. The debt is carried at the amortized cost schedule. You know that already from the previous things we did. That is carried at amortized cost. Like you know already. And then two. Equity is carried at the initial amount on the statement of or in the statement of financial position and uh, equity as other components of equity as other components of equity so we do not change the issue relating to uh the equity amounts that will still be carried in that particular case calculated as the present value i missed something can be calculated let me put that up that element can be calculated as the present value. I think I was talking, but mixing it can be calculated as the present value of the cash flows of the convertible loan notes discounted at the interest rate of the bond without interest rate of bonds without conversion, right? On 1st January 2021, Hiba, now that question. The requirement is to prepare for there, there is no requirement here, but the requirement is to prepare the financial statement for 31st December 2021. So this one we are preparing the financial statement for 31st December 2021. Okay. Uh, because that is not the same. This is Zeus. This is Habib. So the year ended is different. Okay. So on 1st January 2021, Hiba. What's the word? Issued. The first question we solved, raised finance. Now it is saying issued. If they issued, then we'll be dealing with either financial liability or equity instruments or both. So let's see. Issued 1.5 million shares of one Ghana city each for 1.5 million Ghana city. For 1.5 million Ghana city. So in the context of this question, they are issuing shares. But stay with me. Each share is convertible. Oh, 
So it becomes a convertible loan note. Okay, assuming it was just shares, then it would have been an equity instrument. But here it says the shares are convertible. Okay, they issued shares that are convertible into two ordinary shares. So probably they issued a preference share, which is debt. So it can be converted into two ordinary shares at par value of 0 0.10 Ghana CD on 25th, sorry, 31st December 2025. So how long is that? We're going to look at that. But now we know that HIBA is with convertible loan notes. HIBA is with convertible loan notes. So if it is a convertible loan note, what is the proceeds? We were told that it issued 1.5 million shares for 1.5 million Ghana CD. Maybe we can tell the examiner that we would like to work three zeros up. So proceeds from the issue in 1,000 Ghana cities is 1 million 500. It's 1,500. In the context of this question, it means that proceeds could be treated as what? The nominal value as well. Okay, so in the context of this question, the proceeds is a share, could be treated also as the nominal value of the loan. So let's go back. Interest is payable at 8%. Okay, so the 8% is the interest payable per annum on 31st December each year. So that is interest where? In arrears. So that's our coupon rate. So the coupon rate is 8% per annum on 31st December each year. On that date of issue, market interest rate for similar bonds without conversion option was 11% per annum. Whoa, I told you that. So this becomes the effective rate. So we are paying the bond holders 8% because they have a right to convert later on. Okay, but actually, assuming they don't have a right to convert, would have paid them 11%. So it tells us that the effective rate is 11%. HIBA expects that the conversion option will not be exercised. We don't care. That last part of the statement, we don't care whether they will exercise it or they don't exercise it or the accounting doesn't change. <laughs> the treatment does not change. So let's crunch the numbers up. So let's bring in the annual interest payment in that particular case. So the cash payment will be on the coupon rate. So that is going to be 8% of 1,500. What do we have? 8% of 1,500. What do I have? 120. 120. So this is how much we will get every year. This is how much we will get every year. Oh, sorry, how much we will have to pay the people every year. I need an annuity factor table because I need a formula to come up. So once we have the payment for the year, we can begin our journey with our calculation. What did we say we do? First, go back to the rules, initial recognition. We said we calculate the debt element by discounting the cash flows that will arise on the debt. That will arise on the debt. So initial rec, initial recognition. What do we have? We're going to be discounting the cash flow. Now, there are two ways to go about this. 
we have the sharks and we have the lazy students. So let's do the two. I'm going to illustrate to you whatever you are comfortable with, you stay with it. Okay. Because I know I have a lot of brains in the class. So we have a year. We have the cash flow coming in. We're going to have the discount factor coming in. And that's at 11%. Then we'll have the present value coming up. Remember, we told the examiner we are lazy, so we like to work three zeros up here. So how many years do we have? The loan was issued on 21st of 1st January 2021, and it will be redeemed on 31st December 2025. So we're going to have 2021. 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025. Okay? The five years. Please stay with me carefully. So for every year, they will receive how much? 120. That is the cash flow. So the 120, 120, 120, 120, 120. Stay with me. Stay with me. In the context of the question, we are told that Hiba expect that the conversion option will not be exercised. Like I said, we don't care about that. If they don't exercise the conversion or they don't convert, then they will get their money. How much will they get? So in the 2025, they will get their interest of 120, then they will get their redemption of the 1,500. So I'm kind of bring to 2025 here just to bring a distinction, but you can actually add it there. But I'm going to bring to uh, 25 here. Let me push this a little bit up. Are you getting the idea? So in the last year, they will get their interest and the nominal value as well. They will get their nominal value as well. Then we calculate the discount factors. In a question like this, you realize that the examiner doesn't give you any discounting table. So you have to calculate it yourself. So you know how to calculate that already. That's going to be one over one plus R exponent N uh, in that case. So for 2021, Punch it out real quick. Let's see what we have. That'll be one over 1.11. 1. 1. 1. It's 11%. So it will be 1 plus 0. 0.11. So it'll be 1.11. 1. 1. Exponent 1. 2022 will be the same thing, exponent 2. 2023, the same thing, exponent 3. 2024, the same thing, exponent 4. 2025, the same thing, exponent 5. What do I have? 0 0.901. Okay. 0 0.812. Okay. 0 0.731. 731. Okay. Dot 659. All right. Dot 593. So it's not given, so you got to figure it out yourself. So we're going to bring these up respectively here. Okay, I think I could bring it up. Let me just cut it and go paste it. I don't know if I can even paste it. Will it? Oh, it won't work. <laughs> Let me just write them individually. 0 0.901. 0 0.812. 0 0.731. No point six five nine. No point five nine three. No point five nine three. So we we'll duplicate the final year. What do we have? So you let's multiply up respectively fastest and give me some figures. Let's go. One oh eight point one two. Sorry. One oh eight point one two. Okay. Uh, give me the answers on absolute terms, please. We are working three zeros up. So 0 0.0, uh, 
Ninety-seven. Okay. Eighty-three. Eighty-eight. Eight. Eight. Eighty-eight. Eighty-eight. Okay. Twenty twenty four. Seventy nine. Okay. Twenty five. Seventy one. Twenty five. Eight nine zero. Eight nine zero. Okay. So let's add it up. That becomes the debt element. One, three, three, three. One, three, three, three. Yeah. Okay. So that is how you get your debt component. But we need the equity. So our equity element, what did we say? Is the proceeds, which in the question is 1,005, Minus the debt we just had, 1333. Three. What do I have? 167. 167. That is what we mean by the split. That is what we mean by the split. Now, like I said, that's a lot of work for me. So if you want to be smart, like I said, it, it depends on option. So this shadow, we can do amortize or we can use annuity. Because you see, when the same amount of money is received over a given number of period, you're better off using the annuity and going away. So I could do the debt component, sorry, the debt component in another way using the annuity. That is if you remember the formula though. Because the present value formula, that's what I wrote here. If we are using the annuity, <clears throat> Let's give the annuity formula as well. That was what I was looking for here. It had some nice formula there. One minus into bracket one plus R, bracket closes one R over R. <laughs> one minus into bracket one plus R, or R over R. Am I right? Let's see if I'm right. Yeah, something like that. Is that plus? Multiply by the cash flow. No, we are just looking for the annuity factor. So, so N is the number of periods. Now, so how long do we have here? If we are using the annuity factor, we'll bring year, definitely. We'll bring the cash flow. Definitely, we'll bring the discount factor here at 11%. Definitely, we'll bring the present value here. Definitely. Then this is what we do. From 2021 to 2025, the annual cash flow is 120. That is five years. So let's go calculate the annuity factor. One minus into bracket one plus 0 0.11, bracket close minus exponent five because there are five years, divided by 0 0.11. So scientific calculators, you can punch that out, give us some answers there. Six nine six. Three point six nine six. So if you go this way, three point six nine six, you bring it up. Then you multiply that by the one twenty. What do we get? Oh, 443. 443. Yeah. Okay. But remember, in 2025, there will be redemption. So the okay. redemption... Uh, let's make it 444. Okay. Oh. There will be redemption of 1005. So oh. that redemption amount, what will happen is that that will be discounted at the present value. So present value for year five, we said it was 0 
Eh, it is confusing. Whatever you are, you understand, go for it. 2.593. So the redemption amount will be discounted at the present value for the fifth year or for that year of redemption. But the annuity will go to the annuity factor. So let's multiply that. Okay, it will be the same answer as 890. So add it up. That will give you the debt element. One, three, three, four. Okay. One, three, three. Four. Four, okay. So maybe because of approximation, that's why the answer is just one in excess. But that is alternatively how you can do the calculation. So choose your choice and make sure whatever choice you're going for, you understand how the treatment is supposed to be. Whether you go with present value or you go with annuity, it's your swag. But that is the initial recognition. So what it means is that the double entry, now you're not supposed to do this, but I'm just showing you. We debit our cash or bank. The money we had, which is the 1,500, then we are crediting liability with 1333. Three. Then the balancing figure is being credited to equity. And we got 167. This is the journal entry of what is happening on the initial measurements. On the initial measurements. Again, in the context of this question, <laughs> there is no, um, how do we call it? Hash or transaction cost. Okay, in the context of this question, there is no transaction cost. Assuming there was, we would have shared it. You would have shared it. So let me just do an illustration for you in relation to that. Just illustration. So illustration. Assuming there was transaction cost, let's say the transaction cost was um, 800. Hmm, that's too much. Maybe two, just 200. If the transaction cost was 200, how do we share it? Pretty simple. Debt will be here. Equity will be here. Total will be here. Then we'll bring in the proceeds. We got 133. Three, and we got 167, giving us a total of 1,005. Then we we'll less the transaction cost, which is 200. So on a pro rata basis, can you share for me? What do we have? 1333 divided by 1,005 times 200. And let's have that respectively coming in. 178. One. For the 178. So we can get the current amount. That becomes the initial measurement. That means this will be like 22. So we can less. That means it should be like 145. 1155 for the date. That's it. That becomes the initial measurement. You use the 155 on the amortized cost shadow to do your workings on subsequent measurements. So if there was a transaction cost, this is how you deal with it. It goes back with the principle that we illustrated. Goes back with the principle. It goes back with the principle. So that's initial recognition. But that is not what the examiner said you should do. He says how this should be presented in the financial statement for the year ended 31st December 2021. So we have to prepare the amortized cost schedule. And that's the subsequent measurement bit. To determine the carrying amount, we use the amortized cost schedule. So the year ended will come. Balance brought forward will come. We bring in the interest. 
if you remember, we're going to use the effective rate of 11%. Bring in the cash that we will pay. If you remember, that will be based on the coupon rate. Bring the balance brought down. So for the first year ended, 31st December 2021, we'll have the debt components coming in, 133. So let's get 11% of that. Our cash payment here is 120. So let's get 11% of that. One four seven. Sorry? One four seven. One four seven. So we add it up to get a carrying amount. One three six zero. One three six zero. And you know what you're supposed to do already. The effective rate to go to profit or loss. The coupon rate, this is more than four more years to go. So it will go under non-current liability. That is the idea about determining the carrying amount of the convertible shares. So the interest for the year, 147, the liability, we're going to shift this down a little to make room for the equity. Bring in other components of equity, 167. Then under liabilities, we're going to have non-current liability. And we'll bring in the 8% convertible shares. And that is the current amount we got here, 1360. So if you want financial statements, that is what we need to understand in that particular case.